If you're an actor, especially a film or television actor, you're going to eventually want a demo reel. A demo reel is a great calling card for actors. But how long should the demo reel be? What clips should you use? What is the purpose of a demo reel? And do you even need one? Find out in just a second. Hey oh, Doug Fall here. This is Augmented Actor, the place you come to improve your acting. The purpose of a demo reel is to show a casting director or an agent or manager, some prospective buyer, so to speak, what you can do on film, how you look on film, how you sound, how you come across your screen presence, basically. This is information that they can't get from a resume or a headshot. They can get some of that information, but those things can be a little deceptive as well. So a demo reel sort of shows them what they're getting. It also gives casting directors a chance to see you in a different light. If you have an agent and a casting director wants to see more footage and you don't have a demo reel, the agent might send them previous auditions that you've submitted. So a demo reel is a compact, clean cut curated bundle of clips your best clips that you can submit to a casting director if you're a famous actor you probably don't need a demo reel people will already know your work and if you're a beginning actor you probably also don't need a demo reel because you don't have enough footage to put on it so a demo reel is for people that are kind of intermediate and advanced and they're growing their careers but they haven't quite made it into the a-list celebrity status yet if you're a theater actor you don't really need a demo reel although some theater casting directors might still want to see more of what you do or examples of you singing or dancing or something like that so if you have that it's it's great. The problem with theater demo reels is that the footage is often crappy because it's usually shot from the back of the house and it's technically not kosher to videotape shows due to copyright infringement. I recommend shooting your own footage, doing things from shows maybe or whatnot, just stuff that you do well and putting that together into a demo reel. So what is a casting director looking for in a demo reel? They're looking for your type, basically the type of roles that you are good at playing and that you have played in the past, as well as varieties on those types. So other types that you can play. Like I said before, they're also looking for your screen presence, how you look, how you sound, how you move. They're looking for your overall level of prior work. So are you mostly doing student films and independent films and the level's a little shoddy, or are you doing professional movies and television series? So you want to make your demo reel look as professional as possible so that they see you in that light. It elevates you to the next step. And they're ultimately just looking, are you able to handle the role that they have to offer? All right, so let's start with some rules. Now the rules about demo reels, headshots, all those things, they change over time. I mean, in the olden days, you used to only have black and white headshots and nowadays they're color. Well, that happened because color printing became much more popular and actors started using it and then it became the industry standard. Right now, 2021, here are the standards for demo reels. One, you want them to be short. Two minutes long is the standard. You can go a little bit longer to three minutes if you have some really crucial stuff you want to put in your demo reel, but keep it between two and three minutes. Now, the reason for this is because certain casting sites like Actors Access have a two minute limit on their demo reels. So you want to stay within that limit, but more so casting directors see a lot of people. They're going through a lot of reels and they're usually only going to watch like the first 30 seconds to a minute. If that the beginning of your demo reel is the most important. And if anything past two minutes is usually not going to get seen. You want to basically trim out the fat as much as possible when you do a demo reel and just put exactly what is needed and no more. You want to leave them wanting more. Now, if you play a bunch of different types, you want to lean into the type that is targeting that particular audition. So it's okay to have more than one demo reel that show off different types, or you know, maybe you're comedic in one and dramatic in another. In fact, if you have a lot of footage, that's what I would recommend. Don't try to cram it all into one reel. Make several smaller reels. Whatever clips you choose, you want them to highlight you the most. Other actors will appear in these clips, but you need to be the focus and you want those clips to start with your face so that we know who you are right off the bat. Ah, oh, what fresh hell is this? If you have footage where you're acting opposite a famous actor or with a famous director or on a famous show, make sure you include some of that. And you should pick clips that are within the last five years or so with your current look. Highlight those first, put your older stuff later on in the demo reel. I'm still using a clip from 10 years ago. I'm totally young, but I put that at the end of my demo reel because it demonstrates my ability to carry a film and do, and do that type of role, but it was a long time ago and I look much younger. So start with how you look now. I swear he was like a zombie when he came back. 
When you're choosing your clips, you want to have each clip be anywhere from 5 to 30 seconds long. And you want to have about 4 to 6 different clips to choose from. You want to not use clips all from the same movie. If that's all you've got, it's going to look like you're stretching things out to just try to fill this two minutes. So it's best to get some other footage before you put your demo reel together. When compiling a demo reel, you want to start by gathering all the footage that you can. Now, where does this footage come from? Well, if you do a student film or an independent film, usually in your contract, they'll give you a copy and a credit because they can't afford to pay you. And so you make sure you hold them up to getting you that copy. Sometimes they just say they'll send you clips from the film as it's being edited. Follow up with those directors after about six months and remind them that they're going to send you some clips. Now, if they're going to send you a copy, you have to wait for the film to actually be finished. And sometimes films don't get finished. If you're promised a copy of the project or clips from the film, make sure you put it in writing in your contract at the beginning. That way you have something to point to when they don't give you the footage later on. Now, if you're in a big Hollywood production or a major network television show, they're probably not going to release any footage until after the show has aired or been released to the public. So you might have to wait a little while to get that footage. And then usually they're not going to provide you with a copy. You have to either buy the DVD and, and, and capture it yourself using an analog to digital converter. I'll put a link down to a digital converter that you can buy on Amazon that might help you with that. Or you download it off of YouTube or something like that using software like OBS Studio for Windows or Mac to capture uh, the footage. Sometimes you don't have the best clips that really show you off or it didn't turn out well or the sound sucked or the lighting sucked. There are other alternatives. You can shoot your own footage for a demo reel. So it's kind of like when you do a voiceover demo reel. Voiceover actors don't just draw from all the commercials that they've actually done. Oftentimes they will start with just some commercial copy. They'll go to a recording studio, record their different voices, add sound effects in, and they'll, they'll compose a voiceover demo reel. And so it's much the same in this sense. You take the footage that you have that you want to use and then you supplement it with sh footage that you shoot from other sources. And then that way you have a little bit more control over the pieces that you want to present. Set up like a really professional looking self-tape audition. I'll have a microphone, a, a plain background, and nice even lighting. I have a video about self-tape auditions if you want to get some tips and advice on that. However, a lot of people for demo reels will hire out a, an individual or a company that specializes in shooting demo reel footage. Sometimes going that route and hiring a professional to shoot your footage is actually better than the footage that you can get from a film. That little fish will be mine. The casting director kind of wants to see you in a cinematic setting. So for instance, if you do a self-tape audition, you want even lighting and a plain background. Well, that's great for self-tape auditions, but for a demo reel, it's almost better to have cinematography lighting. So you want three-point lighting setups. I have some suggestions for some lights you can buy down below. And also you want, you know, a background, a location. You, you want to be on a set, basically. So you want to make sure you're off book and really well rehearsed and you have another actor that is really good that's playing opposite you and, and shoot it just like a movie. And just look online for demo reel photographers or demo reel editors. You'll find some professionals online in your area, hopefully. I know in LA there are a bunch of them. Now you got your footage, it's on your computer and you're editing. Now you can use any editing software. I use Final Cut Pro, you can use DaVinci Resolve, Premiere, Avid, iMovie, and even on your phone or device there are a lot of editing apps as well. You want to make sure that your demo reel is in landscape format, not in vertical format. This isn't TikTok. And you want to make sure it's in high definition so you look as good as possible. And choose your best clip from each film. That first clip should be something that's really good. You're, you're most proud of this acting. It's recent. It looks like you. It is the type of character that you mostly get cast as. And it just highlights you so they know right off the bat what they're getting. Now when you're editing your clips together, your first clip should could be a little bit longer, maybe 20, 30 seconds. And then the rest of the clips can be 10 seconds or 15 seconds. That way you can fit like good six clips in in that two minutes. You don't need to worry about context when you're choosing your clips. You don't need to set up a scene or we don't need to understand what's actually going on. We just need to see that you are acting. You also want to choose clips where you are the primary focus. It can cut away to other actors and there can be other dialogue in the scene, but you want to have the bulk of it. You want, you want to, they want to see you, not the other actor. So when you're editing, it's okay to chop out sections where the other actor is talking uh, and you're not on camera. 
and a skilled editor will be able to seamlessly make those cuts. And that's one thing about this that you can note, is that if there are problems with the original footage, like bad sound, you can adjust the sound in post. And if the color is off, you can color correct it as well. It, you don't have to be exactly perfect like the way it was shot. You can take the footage and make it a little bit better for the purposes of the demo reel. We're going to America. Marines are up the road. You still got time. Don't worry about transitions or fancy effects and stuff like that. It's okay to put a title, overlay the title on top of your footage so that it says the name of the film, the role that you played, or the size of the role. Don't put title cards in between the clips because that wastes time. Put them on the clip. Overlay them. If you put all your clips in and you just don't know what to do and your demo reel is three minutes long, go back through and see if there's moments you can remove from the clips or see if there's one clip. Pick the clip that you are the least happy with your performance and cut that. Trim, 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 trim the fat. Your demo reel should have a title card at the beginning of the reel, about three to five seconds long, no longer, and at the end of the reel as well. Keep it real short. They can pause it if they need to see the information. This can include a, a photo or your current headshot, your name. You can put your physical characteristics, your height, your weight, your hair color, eye color, your representation, your agency, and their contact information, either an email or phone number. You can also include your own email and phone number, although I don't put my phone number in my demo reel because who knows who's going to watch it. Now in the past it used to be standard to have a little sizzle reel at the end, little action shots and a montage of stuff. That's no longer uh, considered necessary. If you have some extra clips that are just really short and you want to kind of compile them together in a little montage, make it about 10 seconds long and put it at the very end of your video, but it's again not necessary. And if you want to see an example demo reel, you can watch mine. I have it linked here or down in the description below. It's three minutes long, so I'm breaking my own rules here. Now you know how to make a demo reel, you better get out there and start making one, right? Get, get going. Come on. Time is of the essence. We'll see you next time.